Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Zach, uh, PGY1. I'll be talking about the management of uh, hypertensive emergencies in adolescents. Um, I don't know how to use this, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Um, so just to begin, uh, hypertension in a pediatric population um, is pretty common, but it's relatively um, um, undiagnosed. Uh, that's part of the reason why I wanted to discuss this topic. Um, the objectives for today, I'll be defining the defin um, hypertensive emergency or urgency, uh, talk about the etiology, uh, clinical manifestations, initial management, and uh, treatment within the ED. Uh, just to begin, uh, most of you guys are already aware of uh, the definition in adults of uh, hypertensive uh, emergency and urgency. Usually it's uh, systolic blood pressure of 180 or equal to 180 or above, or diastolic blood and or diastolic blood pressure of uh, 120 or above with an organ damage. Um, in urgency, it's just without an organ damage. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, in the pediatric uh, population, it's quite different. Uh, hypertension is uh, measured by sex, age, and height, um, and a percentile rank uh, rankings. There's uh, three stages of hypertension. Uh, to begin with, you have. Uh, of course, elevated blood pressure, you have stage one hypertension and stage two hypertension. Um, with most children, uh, stage two hypertension will be uh, greater to or equal to 95th percentile plus uh, 12 millimeters of mercury. I'm gonna be focusing more about adolescents. So it's usually uh, greater to or equal to 150, 140 um, millimeters uh, per mercury over 90 millimeters per uh, mercury. But uh, in terms of uh, hypertensive emergency, uh, we usually say it's created to or equal to 95th percent uh, plus 30 millimeters of uh, uh, mercury. So in terms of adolescents, it will be about the same, uh, be about 180 over 120. Um, I just like to say that we often feel like hypertension in uh, the ED um, is based off, you know, acute pain or the being present in the uh, emergency department but there's uh, various factors that go into that. Um, so the etiology, for the most part, um, if you're greater than six, year, six years old, the most common etiology is usually due to renal artery stenosis or renal parenchymal diseases. In adolescents greater than 13 year, years old, the most not common, of course, is still renal parenchymal disease, but you also have to consider preeclampsia, uh, sympathetic drug intoxications like cocaine, amphetamine use, and serotonin syndrome as well. Um, but generally, primarily hypertension is identifiable, identifiable in children. Um, it's often related to obesity as well, but secondary hypertension is more common in uh, younger children as well. In terms of the clinical manifestation, um, there's no clear cut. Uh, this is what hypertensive emergency and urgency looks like. Um, most times children might come in asymptomatic, but for any child with um, ele elevated blood pressure, complaints of any symptoms such as persistent headache, nausea, vomiting, altered uh, mental status, hypertensive crisis should be ruled out immediately. Um, most commonly, as the child gets older, um, the symptoms start to become more present with like headaches and dizziness, um, but they could be even vague with uh, inattention, fatigue, difficulty sleeping, um, decreased exercise tolerance and uh, shortness of breath. Um, in younger children, um, they might even present with uh, hypertensive encephalopathy, uh, also called like Press syndrome, which is posterior reversible um, encephalopathy syndrome. Uh, they slowly might present with like altered mental status, um, seizures, visual disturbances, and headaches. So if you have a patient that comes in hypertensive, of course, main thing you have to check the blood pressure. You know, usually younger children, they're running around, crying and stuff like that. So usually we don't like that blood pressure that's first given. If we can calm them down, um, the cuff should be on the right side, they should be sitting. Um, and normally uh, we try to have the right cuff size. If you know it's too big, it's too small, we might have um, errors in the actual uh, measurement. And if we could, I know sometimes we're busy in the ED and we might have to do a manual um, measurement. 
Um, if all that's done and they're still hypertensive, of course, you know, ABC is IV O2 monitor um, and a focus history and of course, uh, physical exam. Um, but ideally, um, you want to measure the blood pressure on all four limbs. If you notice that the lower extremities is, uh, th there's a difference between the lower and upper extremities or a difference between the right and left side, that could be a sign of a poor rotation of the aorta. Um, also on a physical exam, there's a, you can see signs of like papilledema. You also might notice alter mental status. Um, you might see from the actual history that they might have hematuria or there might be signs of renal failure or MI, uh, CHF or pulmonary edema. Um, and if you do see those signs, of course, it warrants an ED workup. Um, within a workup, of course, we're going to do some diagnostic testing, which includes a CBC, BMP, UA. Um, that's primarily to see if there's any uh, end-stage renal disease or any renal failure or if there's um, any signs of anemia resulting from chronic renal disease or hemolytic, hemolytic uremic syndromes. Um, and then you can have hypertensive urgency, but that does warrant a workup and follow up with primary care. But if, if, if they are symptomatic, then uh, you should, of course, treat. Um, and, and also, of course, chest x-ray and EKG if patients endorsing chest pain, respiratory syndromes. If there is neurologic symptoms, of course, a head CT is warranted as well. In terms of uh, treatment in adults, normally with hypertensive emergency, we want to reduce the mean arterial pressure by 25% within uh, about two hours. Um, urgency should, um, and that's usually with IV medication, and then with urgency, you should uh, lower within 24 hours using oral agents. There are some similarities in adolescence, um, but our blood pressure goal for ch a child with hypertensive emergency um, is of course using IV medication over the first eight hours of treatment. Um, Overly rapidly, like lowering the blood pressure more than 25%, um, their plan can lead, of course, to you know, irreversible target organ damage. It can lead to permanent um, neurologic, neurologic um, symptoms, visual defects, MI, renal insufficiency, and so forth. The medication of choice um, from all the articles that I read was uh, labetalol. Um, it can be given in repeated doses over every 20 minutes, but most often it's given in a drip. Um, the bolus give uh, 0.2 to 1 milligram per kilogram. Um, up to 40 milligrams per dose. Um, and this is for adolescents. Um, the drip could give uh, 0 0.25 to mil uh, milligrams per kilograms per hour. Um, just with lobetalol, you have to be careful with uh, bronchoconstriction. Um, it should be avoided with any infants with chronic lung disease or children with uh, asthma, because it can also worsen pulmonary edema as well in children with heart failure. Um, if you do have a patient with asthma or pulmonary edema or something of that nature, you can give them the cardiobeam. Uh, which it will be in a continuous infusion of uh, 0 0.5 to 4 milliequ uh, milliequivalents per minute. Um, but this could also cause some hypertension or headache or cause uh, tachycardia as well. And then any patient with underlying chronic kidney disease or bottom overload might warrant um, some diuretic therapy um, like IV furosemide or bimetanide. Some other medication options, but less often used. Um, just because the adverse effects and um, you know um, is hydralazine. Um, of course, it's a direct vasodilator of the arterial smooth muscle. Its onset of action is a little uh, slower than a carbine or a labetalol, and its duration of action is pretty long. Um, so you might overshoot the high um, when you're trying to lower the blood pressure. I'll often go into hypotension with potential for target organ um, ischemia. Um, of course, it can also cause some reflex tachycardia. Um, in terms of esmolol, it does have a ha uh, rapid onset. Um, it can be useful in certain patient populations, especially those that um, just had cardiac surgery. Um, it is metabolized in the bloodstream, so it's safe for patients with uh, kidney or liver disease, uh, but it's relatively contraindicated for patients with asthma, or, and it may cause profound uh, bradycardia. And lastly, nitroprusside uh, is used to be um, more commonly used, but it's not used as often just because um, it could lead to cyanide toxi toxicity, especially with prolonged use, which is about three days. Or it, patients with renal failure, um, you might have to co-administer with sodium disulfate, and it's questionable it may increase intracranial pressure. So in terms of the overall algorithm, if you have a child with elevated blood pressure, um, 
Of course, you have to make sure the blood pressure measurements are accurate. Um, you repeat the blood pressure measurements, make sure you do the lower extremities and um, upper extremities. You have to identify if there's any life-threatening symptoms, um, any um, organ damage, hypertensive and encephalopathy, heart failure, and so forth. Um, if there's not, that's hypertensive or urgency. Um, it does warrant a workup and then follow with primary care outside of the ED. But if it does, if there are life-threatening symptoms, uh, then you should, of course, you know, treat. Um, first, you have to do, you know, your ABCs, you know, airway and breathing, obtain the IVO2 monitors, and of course, continue measuring uh, the blood pressure itself. If you do see papilledema, ultramental status, seizures, neurological deficits, you want to obviously treat the seizures with uh, benzoyl, like a resipam, obtain imaging. Um, if there's, you know, brain mass, a uh, brain mass, or hemorrhage, or a stroke, you uh, don't want to lower the blood pressure without any guidance from neurosurgery or neurology, and you want to treat the increased ICP and um, underlying causes. If there isn't any, you know, seizures or mass or lesions or anything of that nature. Um, there may be other conditions that um, can be a cause of the um, indicated blood pressure, like I stated earlier, the coarctation of aorta. It could be, of course, severe pain, preeclampsia, cocaine, amphetamines, um, jellyfish or scorpion stings. I don't know how many jellyfish or scorpion stings we get here. Um, I don't think a lot. Um, and it could also be pheochromocytomas, and it could be intracranial hypertension as well. Of course, if you figure out any of those are the cause, we would treat. If not, this is hypertensive emergency. We're going to give a beta law. We're going to give the bolus and then a uh, drip. If they have asthma, we're going to give them the cardipine. And we're going to lower it over eight hours, no more than 25% of the difference between the systolic blood pressure and the systolic uh, blood pressure goal. And then if they have signs of overload, like I state, we're going to you know, give some di uh, diuretics. we give some Lasix or uh, Bumenide as needed. If not, we're going to continue uh, lowering the blood pressure, but you're going to reassess every 30 minutes. If the blood pressure is not lowered in 30 minutes, you can um, give a beta low and a cardipine drip together. Um, if it's contraindicated that you can't give a beta low, um, you can also give uh, hydrolyzine. Um, and if they have chronic kidney disease, of course, you can. Uh, give hydrology, like I said earlier. If not, you can give a uh, continuous infusion of sodium nit nitroprosite. Um, overall, you just continue lowering the blood pressure. Um, you perform further diagnostic evaluation and correct any underlying causes that you may find. So in conclusion, uh, overall, you have to just identify the stages of hypertension. Uh, like I said earlier, there's elevated hypertension, there's stage one and there's stage two. Um, for Adolescents and teenagers, mostly it'll be the same, around the same recommended uh, numbers, greater to or equal to uh, systolic blood pressure of 180 over 120. Um, you have to identify if there's any um, end stage, or I mean not end stage, any organ damage that could be identifiable. Um, and of course, uh, you have to treat that with IV medication over the first eight hours, trying to lower it 25%. And our first line medication is labetalol. If asthmatic, asthmatic, you can give them the cardipine. And that is it. That is my references. Any questions? Just a couple comments. I think uh, it's very important to remember that uh, hypertension in pediatrics is very significant. Uh, I think we get kind of uh, jaded with hypertension uh, in the emergency department, especially uh, adults with PD docs, uh, which we see a lot in adults. But uh, you have to key in when you have these patients who are adolescents or even younger than one who are elevated to the You look up the, the guidelines and look up uh, the usually you know, high levels in terms of the age, because it is a it's a sign that they have some significant disease. And then just in terms of agents that you use, I'm not a big fan of available because it's very cardioactive. Uh, so I think the best thing to do is think about uh, what and organ damage you're treating and you're concerned about and target your blood pressure management towards that. Uh, so don't get, don't, don't get into the habit of just uh, going to the label. Think about what, what the patient is trying to exhibit and treat that based on the blood pressure. Thank you. I would agree. I like that you emphasize looking for the underlying cause because in adolescents, especially with very bad blood pressure, there's almost always an underlying cause. You can't just say it's primary essential. And unless you wind up treating that 
that cause, or at least the, identifying it, they're, they're going to do poorly in the long run. Um, and kidney is usually something in the kidney is, in my experience, is the most common. You always want to look at their urine and you want to look at their renal function. Okay, no more questions? And that's it. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Small Team and Dr. Tina for my multiple emails.